Hello, and welcome to Lifetime on Court, the show where we break down your favorite made-for-TV movies one bottle at a time. I am your host, Patrick Serrano, and today we are talking about my wife's secret life. Hello, what's your secret? Are you having a secret life? The movie stars Kate Villanova, Jason Cermak, and Matthew McCall. On the show, we either pour it up, which means yes, or put a cork in it, which means no thank you. What are we going to do? Pour it up! Now, if you haven't seen the movie and you want to avoid spoilers, you're going to want to go ahead and hit pause and then come on back because I'm about to do a quick little recap starting now. The movie begins with a woman named Laurel. She is an overworked mother with a husband and kid, which means she is a woman in a TV movie. Laurel and her husband, James, are in a rough patch in their relationship. He cheated on Laurel, and she is struggling to forgive him. James suggests a romantic getaway in a cabin, but is turned down by Laurel because she has a work conference. When she arrives at the conference, she is surprised to learn that her room reservation has been canceled and stays at a shady motel. In the lobby, Laurel literally runs into a handsome stranger. Later, he sees her again and invites himself to have lunch with her. Lunch quickly turns to wine, and wine turns to making out in the gazebo. Ooh la la. In the middle of the night, they meet up and have some serious sexy time. The next morning, Laurel regrets hooking up with the stranger, whose name happens to be Kenneth. Laurel leaves abruptly and then cries in the shower. Kenneth doesn't get the hint and shows up at Laurel's lobby with flowers. Then he shows her a sex tape that he made on his phone and blackmails her. Kenneth is set on ruining her marriage. Angela, Laurel's sister, gets into a car accident while watching Laurel's kids. The other driver is Kenneth. He of course charms her because he's so damn handsome. And Angela is manipulated into telling him about James and Laurel. Oh, and they also have a pizza party. Angela and Kent start dating. Laurel and James finally take that romantic getaway and it is decidedly unromantic. Laurel breaks the news to James that she cheated on him. He leaves for some fresh air and ends up being pushed down the stairs by Kent. After seeing the doctor, James and Laurel head home and find one red rose and a note in their bedroom. There is a message and it triggers a memory for James. He worked in an abuse case as a prosecutor and put a man away for a long time. Looks like the man is out, and Kent or Matthew or whatever this man's name is, is that guy. James gets arrested for assaulting a crazy man who actually hits his head in a car to make it look like he was assaulted. A private detective is hired, and he gives some backstory on Kent slash Matthew. Also, there's a Ryan in there now. He witnessed his mother's murder and has a history of abuse. He stalked Laurel intentionally and targeted her as revenge for James taking away his wife and ruining his life. Kent, Matthew, Ryan, or whatever his name is, kidnaps Laurel, shocks the neighbors, and drives her to a cabin. They are followed there by James, who is released from jail, and the detective. The detective is immediately shot, and James attempts to rescue his wife. Laura ends up saving him by freeing herself and shooting the bad guy herself. The movie ends with them in the hospital. They are more devoted to each other than ever, which wouldn't be that hard to do considering they're both cheaters. And that is my wife's secret life. So what's great about the movie is that we start off with Laurel and she's like an overworked mom, like very stereotypical, like almost Hallmark type of leading lady. Then things get a little bit more lifetimey. Let me tell you, an eye for an eye for an affair thing is not going to work out well. I think that it's pretty good for a lifetime movie, but it's very generic. But fun. The actors all here were very good, and there were some very steamy sex scenes. So we're down for that. Pour it up. The man she chooses that has like way too many names in this movie, Kent, is so fine. Matthew McCall's been in a lot of like sci-fi stuff, like um, Star Trek or Tomorrowland. If anyone remembers that movie that I saw in the theater for some reason, probably because of him. He's so fine. <laughs> He really is. Those cheekbones. And now it is time for the Minority Report, the segment where we talk about representation in TV movies and why it matters. This movie didn't have principals that were POCs, but we did have some supporting characters. There's the detective, played by Zach Santiago, 
Officer Simon, played by Reese Alexander, Candace, played by Camisa Wilshire, and David, played by Hani Mafti. I know we're filming in Canada, but we can try to get some more POCs to represent what America actually looks like into those leading roles. Let's get on that. And I think that wraps it up for this episode. If you want more Lifetime Uncorked, you can find us at LifetimeUncorked.com. We watch these movies so you don't have to, but if you do, we'd love to hear from you. You can follow me at Patrick Lee Gal or the show at Lifetime Uncorked. Don't forget to like and subscribe and leave a comment below suggesting a movie you want us to cover or just to say hey. Okay, I think that's it. Goodbye. Bye.